Hi everyone, my name is Walter Rowe. I'm a Capture One affiliate. Today we're going to talk about a new feature in Capture One 21 called Dehaze. Here I've got a portrait and I'm going to show you how I use the new Dehaze tool for retouching portraits, which I think is something certainly outside the box and unusual that you would not normally anticipate using Dehaze on. First let's go to the grid. Let's select a normal outdoor picture. This is the kind of picture not necessarily this exact picture. But this is the kind of picture you would expect to use dehaze on. If I hit the Y key and show you the before and after, you can see there is quite a bit of kind of fogginess, haziness to this picture. This is a little uh, wren that was perched on a rail outside my window and I just stuck the camera up to the window and got the picture and it was kind of a foggy, snowy day outside and this is what, what I got. And this is what I was able to do with it. Uh, if I hold down the Opt or Alt key and hit the reset button on Dehaze, you can see what the picture looked like before applying Dehaze. And when I let go, you can see how Dehaze has done a tremendous job of adding clarity uh, to this picture. Now this is kind of the traditional use of Dehaze, and this is what most people expect, especially if you're doing outdoor landscapes. Uh, it's a hazy afternoon. Uh, you're taking uh, a wide angle picture with broad distance and and things definitely always appear a bit hazier off in the distance just because you're looking through a lot of uh, condensation in the air and things like that so this is kind of traditional things you would do with the haze and here you can see it really works and they've done a tremendous job of, uh, of implementing this tool uh, one of the great benefits is they actually let you do, use the color picker uh, most implementations of dehaze don't give you a color picker. Uh, the application automatically picks a color in the frame and you apply the degree of dehaze, but you don't have any uh, control over which color tones are affected. The application does everything for you. Capture One has gone one step further in that if you don't like the choice that it makes, and it will uh, initially make a choice for you, it will do, there is an auto setting and it will automatically try and pick a color to dehaze for you. But if you don't like that color choice, you can click on the picker, the uh, color picker, pick a color in your image, and uh, then you can adjust away. And here you can see the benefits of my doing so. What I'm going to show you now is a, is a, a non-traditional use of dehaze. You can see that I have some other portraits on the screen here. And what I've learned is that you can use dehaze for doing portrait retouching. Traditional dodge and burn tools uh, are typically levels and brightness and uh, curves. But what I have found is that in Capture One, when you apply those, uh, especially when you're using burn to darken areas, uh, sometimes you actually lose a bit of color. And so the saturation goes away and it gets a little bit muddy and so you may end up having to do it on a layer, paint it in with a mask, and then maybe add a little saturation back or do a little color edit or something. And that just, uh, you know, it's more work. And so what I've found is um, using dehaze, I can actually use the color picker and pick the skin tone. And I can um, still do it on a layer. Here I have a dehaze uh, layer uh, called definition where I've added definition to this face. If I hit the M key, you can see the red uh, areas are where the mask is um, showing that I've applied adjustments. And if I hit the M key again to hide it, you can see, you know, uh, and then I turn the layer off, you can see just, just a little difference. And what you see is there's just a little bit of like darkening in some areas uh, that um, that I wanted to just use to just give a bit of more hint of um, sh you know shadows and highlights and to me that adds more definition more dynamic image uh, it's it's more beautiful and more attractive and by using the uh, dehaze tool to do so uh, I managed to retain the color as I did it so if I go and uh, turn off the mask, you can see that I've just, uh, you can see where areas just get a little bit darker and it just looks a little more attractive. I'll zoom into the gentleman's face. 
you can just see where it's just just gives a little bit more the, the uh, uh, richness and depth and dimension to the uh, to the portrait. More pictures where I have even better examples. Here's a a portrait I did of a, a good friend of mine, Rob, who is also a photographer. Uh, we had gone on a, a little sunflower field outing that was on a farm, and Rob was standing in the in the shed of the farm at the at the door, and had this wonderful light uh, coming in, shining on him. And I had my flash on the camera, so I did some flash illumination to, to uh, ensure that we kind of filled in the shadows under the brim. But when you have flash coming straight on to the front of the camera, of course that tends to flatten the light. And so it doesn't look all, uh, so pleasing, even though he did have natural daylight. Uh, and so we do have a little bit of, so you know, some shadows and highlights, but not nearly what we would like to see. And if I enable the mask on this layer, you can see I've painted in uh, quite a bit of areas where I wanted to do uh, some darkening, some burning to get more uh, dark areas, but I wanted to retain the color. And here I actually have other layers which have the exact same mask on them, but I've used different tools to demonstrate the effects. Uh, so I've, I've hidden the mask here. This is the dehaze version of adding definition to the image. And if I disable the layer you can see it's relatively flat if i enable the layer there's darkening in different areas i've contoured it uh, and i've added much more dynamic uh, dimension so i'm going to hide i'm going to disable that layer and let me go down to uh, the next layer where i have the same mask applied but i'm using curves and what i want to illustrate in this version is specifically back in this area right here Back in this area right here, you're going to see how curves is kind of um, actually adding contrast in that area. And I'm not really looking to do contrast. And if I go back to the dehaze version, I get some darkening, but I don't get more contrast. And so I've managed to, to maintain the nice, attractive, blurred look, and I'm not drawing attention to it by adding contrast. Um, I'm just darkening the area. So curves actually can cannot apply the effect you want. Uh, it can actually um, add contrast in areas that you that you uh, you don't want it to add. And then I also said, well, let me try clarity. Well, clarity is uh, just another form of contrast. And clarity works a little bit, but clarity is really like a midtone contrast, and it doesn't really darken darker areas. So clarity is not very useful uh, for, for uh, dodging, I'm sorry, for burning. So when I go back to the using dehaze, and I've applied just, a, again, negative eight brightness, just a little bit, and I can actually turn that off, and then just see the effects of the dehaze alone without the brightness, you can still see that it's applying a very nice uh, darkening of the image. Here it's enabled. Here it's disabled, uh, and then just you know the the effects of, of a little bit more uh, brightness change to it, just just enhances the uh, the overall effect just a little bit more. But the dehaze is the real power here because dehaze is retaining that color as it darkens. If I go back to the curves layer, and I go back in here, you can see where. This is getting actually a little bit muddled back here and kind of um, losing some of its color, in my opinion. Dehaze doesn't lose any of the color. It retains the color because as dehaze darkens, it also boosts saturation ever so slightly. So as it darkens, it's retaining that color. So I think this is a really clever and, and uh, interesting um, thing that I have discovered with, uh, with dehaze. Here's another example where I have dehaze used, uh, same location. This is my buddy Rob again, you know, and I was just again just adding a little bit more dimension. Um, I even did it on black and white. It uh, it, it works just as well on black and white. Uh, yeah, I, I, again, I effectively copied this layer over from the color to the monochrome image, and uh, so you can see the effects. It looks really nice. It does a really wonderful job. And then here's this uh, lovely lady in a, in a portrait by herself. And I can 
just see just slight darkening in what I, where I've done here. And you can see I've just now turned on the mask. Let's zoom in a little bit. We're at 50% now. And you can see the mask a little bit better. I'll disable the mask. I'll enable the mask. Disable the mask. Disable the layer. You can see it just lightens up a little bit. It's still a nice photo. It's still a nice portrait. But just, just a touch more just gives it that extra little punch that I wanted. And here the brightness I've only done to minus 5 instead of minus 8. So it really doesn't take much uh, combination of brightness with the dehaze to um, have this effect on portraits. And I think this is just a, a really nice tool that I'm going to add to my arsenal for portrait retouching, especially when I'm in conditions where I have a flash mounted on the camera and the, uh, the photograph may look a bit flat. This particular setting for this photograph, I did have a camera mounted flash, so the image was a little flat. This was inside of a, a barn, but uh, there was a big, huge barn door that had some natural light in. Uh, so, you know, there was a little side light that I had, but the flash does flatten it out a bit. So using dehaze and just painting in a mask and, and adding a little negative brightness really um, helped um, add a little more definition and dimension that makes this uh, just even better. And uh, this picture was taken in 2015. You can see the, the date is actually in the file name. This was five years ago. Uh, and so I've been able to go back and look at some of my, some of my early pictures and they were, uh, you know, just make them even better. And I'm really looking forward to being able to use this going forward when I, uh, when I do portrait retouching. So that's, uh, that's dehaze for adding definition. Here's one more example. I don't remember how well this one, uh, this was just a little bit. This one's not such a great example, um, but I think the others uh, really, really tell the story. Uh, in particular, my buddy Rob here, um, you know, you can, you can clearly see the difference here. Um, you can use it anywhere. Uh, the great thing about dehaze, it is one of those tools you can use on a layer. So you could pick different colors uh, and apply it in different ways. Uh, if, if a person had wardrobe, things that you wanted to emphasize. You could create another layer, uh, pick a color in the wardrobe, and do things with the wardrobe. So, I mean, there's just infinite uh, possibilities with, with this tool. And I think uh, it's going to be a really great addition. And I'm so glad that Capture One has finally added this. And not only will it be great for traditional uses such as landscape, but I'm going to really enjoy using this in my portrait photography, uh, where I just need to do a little bit of of burning and I'm not as satisfied with what I can do with levels and dehaze and being able to use the color picker really just takes it to the next level. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Please use my links uh, if you if you purchase things. I am an affiliate. I get a very small commission if you use my links. I have no other affiliation with Capture One other than getting a commission from you using my links. I don't get paid by them to make these videos. I don't. Uh, I'm not an employee. I'm not authorized to speak in any official capacity. This is just me talking about why I love Capture One and what they bring with each new update to the application. Thanks. Have a great day.